This is a relatively cheap thermal camera module, and today we are going to turn this into a sort of thermal telescope. We say, sort of, because it's more of a monocular than it is a telescope. This, is what we are going to be building today. At thermal wavelengths, it has an optical zoom, of over 10 times. Best of all, if you previously built the thermal microscope we described in a previous video, then you already have most of the parts needed to make this. If you are seeking an even lower cost option, then we also made a costed down version. It has a lower optical zoom, of 5 times, but is still pretty comparable to commercial devices that retail for around $500. This is a fairly simple build, and we are pretty happy with the performance of this simple monocular. For sure this is going to be useful for future projects. All of the infrared lenses from the thermal microscope project are going to be reused, albeit in a slightly different arrangement. In fact, we are even going to reuse the 3D printed case and lens holder from that project. So, if you are interested in making this monocular, but haven't yet watched our thermal microscope video, you might want to watch that as well. There is a link in the description below this video. Right, let's get on and make this thing. Every project, has its very own origin story. In this case it was a bit of a saga, so allow me to explain. During the process of making our thermal microscope, we noticed that first surface mirrors, were excellent reflectors of not only visible light, but also of thermal radiation. So, in a fit of blind optimism, we thought that we could use this to try and build a telescope. A Newtonian telescope, for thermal radiation. So we got busy designing a very small, and rather crude reflector telescope, which used a mirror set that cost us less than 10 US dollars. And then we got to the 3D printing. And boy, was there a lot of 3D printing to do. Including the test parts and the various versions of everything, we went through two full reels of filament. So much for a cheapo telescope. The eyepiece holder cost about $5, and entry-level eyepieces cost about the same. Perhaps the nicest thing that can be said about this abomination, is that it is rather cute, in its own little way. But, it turned out we didn't know much about telescope building, you see we ran into something called the diffraction limits. Because we are trying to image thermal light rays, which have wavelengths that are 10 to 20 times longer than that of visible light, the diffraction limits become a major problem. As a small telescope, the visible light performance was enough to allow us to capture some rather nice video of the moon, and using a solar filter, we also got some nice video of the sun, including very prominent sunspots. But, what this telescope, was not going to be able to do, was to be useful for thermal wavelengths. The issue was that we just could never get anything to be in focus. At this point, we had basically given up on this project. And then something rather wonderful happened. A viewer got in contact with us, and kindly showed how he had been able to get this working, and not only that, his telescope used the exact same mirrors as our own. So, we got to thinking more about this project, and as a first step, we resolved to build a refractor telescope design first. Perhaps, later, we will be able to modify this to be an eyepiece for the Newtonian telescope, but as a future project. We decided upon the simplest design possible, a Keplerian telescope. This requires just two lenses. The idea is that we want to use two lenses with very different focal lengths, as the magnification is a function of the ratio of these two optical elements. For the first lens, 
We are going to use one from our microscope project, a 20mm diameter, zinc selenide lens, with a focal length of just 25.4mm. For the main objective lens, we purchased two options. One has a focal length of 127mm, and the other has an even longer focal length, of 190mm. This means that our monocular will have two magnification options, of roughly 5 and 10. The 127mm focal length lens, cost us about $11, and the 190mm version was more expensive, about $30. One important point, zinc selenide is very toxic. It's pretty safe when in glass form, but these lenses are very easily broken if dropped, and you should wear gloves when handling them. We did an experiment to set up the optical path, and also created a rather nice thermal target to use as something to focus on. So, now we can get the optical path set up, and we can get some rough dimensions for our 3D models. In this experiment the thermal target is about 3 meters away from this crude optical bench. We did this for both options of the object lens. Using the 190mm focal length object lens, we have a magnification of about 10 times. What we did notice though, was that our field of view was pretty poor. But, we still have the other two lenses from our microscope project. Adding these back into the existing microscope housing, we were able to slightly improve the field of view. It isn't perfect, and it comes at the cost of overall sensitivity. You see, each of these lenses, will attenuate some of the thermal infrared light. Right, let's get on and turn this concept into a thermal monocular. This is a very simple design, it is based around a 1 inch diameter PVC water pipe, with 3D printed lens holders, and that microscope enclosure we created in an earlier video. And then it was a simple matter of 3D printing out the design. These days, it is just too easy to forget how things were done before the advent of low cost, consumer level 3D printers being so ubiquitous. The eyepiece lens is friction fitted in place, we want to be sure that we can return this to the microscope when it is needed. This part also holds the camera and the other lenses to the assembly. The next part, is the shorter focal length option, objective lens holder. Again the lens has been friction fitted into place. Next, we have the microscope module that we built in a previous video. There is a link to that video in the description below. This is a section of 1 inch PVC water pipe. This was used as it has pretty low friction, so the focus can be adjusted more easily. The assembly process is just a simple matter of pushing everything into place. And here the low cost version of this project is completed. I'm sure this will be of interest to a few people, but let's be frank, everyone is actually waiting for the main event. And here it is, the assembly of the option that uses the $30 zinc selenide lens. With the addition of the lenses to increase the field of view, the overall magnification is about 15 times. That's crappy magnification for a telescope, but pretty splendid for a thermal monocular. It's such a strange irony, that this project suffered some significant setbacks, but in the end, this was the easiest assembly process of pretty much any project we have undertaken. We also added a GoPro style mount for this thing. And now, we are going out and about, to capture some footage to figure out if this monocular is actually any good.
So, we spent a day of travel, and trouble placating security guards, to try and get some footage of aircraft with our new thermal monocular. Sadly, the best footage was captured using a smartphone that is equipped with a thermal camera. I can tell you now, that was only the second most disappointing thing about the whole fiasco at Shenzhen airport. The most frustrating part, was that my stupid human assistant managed to accidentally delete all of the visible light footage, of that day spent on the side of a road next to the airport. I am now formally inviting applications for the post of human slave, to an AI overlord, in the comments to this video. To be fair, capturing moving objects with a high magnification telephoto lens, is a challenge at the best of times, so capturing a jet aircraft at close range was never going to be an easy ask. All in all, it was a bloody frustrating day at Shenzhen airport. So I tried something else. Using child labor, I got a far better result, and it only cost me a couple of candy bars. It is clear in this footage, that the sensitivity is quite reduced, by the introduction of four infrared lenses into the optical path. Nevertheless, the power of the magnification is very clear, and using these crude lenses, the results were quite surprising. It should be remembered that these lenses are designed for focusing cutting lasers onto their targets, and they are certainly not, imaging grade lenses. This rather shaky footage, is of road markings being painted onto a road junction. Again it does highlight the hardest part of using telescopes. It's not that difficult to make them have a high magnification, what is hard is pointing them at what you actually want to look at. Obviously, in this footage, it does help that there are some hot objects in frame. And, it does appear that the green lookup tables give the best visual results, when using this level of magnification. Here, we can see an 11-year-old girl using up her sparklers, that she had left over from her birthday. Again, the high contrast in temperatures helps to give a more interesting image. Sparklers are interesting things to look at at any time of night or day, but viewing them at thermal infrared wavelengths, is in my opinion, the most interesting way to view these things. So, our results are not exactly perfect, especially when compared to military-grade devices, but given the very low cost of what we have created here, the results were actually far better than we expected them to be. So, all in all, we were pleasantly surprised with the results. And finally, here is a rather splendid image of the moon. To be honest, I find it rather amazing that this simple system, is able to capture the hot side of the moon as it is warmed by the distant rays of the sun. Anyway, let's figure out what we have learned and see if there is anything we can do to improve this little device. This is the second time we have made an accessory for this little thermal camera adapter. It is a fairly basic model, and was bought a few years ago, so it's getting pretty long in the tooth now. Just in case anyone is wondering what particular adapter we are using, this is the Unity 260M. It has a resolution of 256 by 192 pixels, and can operate at up to 25 frames per second. As I just mentioned, this device is pretty old, and I think it has reached the end of its production life, which is a shame. The results that we have obtained, aren't exactly of the highest image quality, but most of that is due to the use of low-cost lenses, that are normally used for focusing carbon dioxide lasers, and are certainly not intended for imaging applications. And yes, we will admit that the thumbnail to this video, does use an image that was captured using a different thermal camera. But at least we did capture this ourselves, and frankly it was the only useful footage we got from a wasted day at the airport. If we had wanted to create clickbait, then we could have done a far better job of it, and had plenty of fun making it. So, maybe we will take this a bit further, 
and try and modify this concept to be the eyepiece of our Newtonian telescope and end up with a real thermal telescope instead of just a monocular. We also want to express our sincerest gratitude to a viewer who goes by the ID of Iridium Red. Your input allowed us to revive this project that we had written off. Also your eyepiece concept inspired this whole monocular project. We haven't given up on the original thermal telescope project, and don't worry, we are already working on yet another project that uses this tiny little telescope. So, it will be used in one project or another, and it certainly won't be wasted. And finally, I just wanted to show you what we are working on for our next project. This is a large, pancake-style Geiger Muller tube. It was kindly donated by a viewer, and we are going to use this, to turn a cheap Geiger counter, into a super sensitive instrument. So make sure you are subscribed if you want to see that. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you think we deserve it, then please feel free to give it a like. And you could always hit subscribe, if you want to see more content like this. On the last few videos, we have enabled YouTube advertising, we hate to do it as it ruins the viewing experience, but all of these videos, require investments in equipment and materials. We get precious few super chat donations. We would like to thank for following viewers for their donations to our projects fund. It's you guys, that really help us to have the opportunity to screw up so many fine experiments. This is still a hobby channel, so we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time. You now have, only a very short time, to choose the next video to watch.